The crowd had enjoyed their fill of blood. Fifty gladiators had entered the furnace and only twenty-five had walked away. Every appetite had been catered for. Horseback warriors had jousted. Boxers had dueled with bare fists. Bowmen had peppered opponents with arrows while spearmen had launched their javelins. Swords, scimitars, axes and triumphs had flashed across the volcanic earth. Limbs and heads severed and hoisted as trophies. The bestiari, specialists in fighting animals, had come up against lions, bears, jackals and wolves. The cruelest contest involved two recently condemned criminals pitted against one another. One armed but blindfolded, the other unarmed but clear-sighted. The blindfold ultimately proved too great to handicap. Now the scorion's quietum was Lord Ignis appeared upon his balcony. People of Scoria, I give you the rarest gift. I show the fire mount of the greatest generosity, my Therian warriors from across the known world. You all saw the blood moon last night, signalling the need for sacrifice. Those gladiators who have fallen thus far today shall have gone some way to quench the mountain's thirst, but she hungers for yet more. We must honour Scoria with the mightiest offerings in order to appease her fire. My eight wonders enter the furnace. The contest is over when only five remain standing. He cast his hands over the arena below, oily skin glistening in the midday sun. Behold, the battle of the beasts! Eight iron gates were cranked open around the furnace, each one sending clouds of dust billowing into the arena. From out of the pens, a ferry and gladiators strode forward. <coughs> Drew squinted through the dust clouds as he looked around the furnace. He walked forward to San Settle, taking in the combatants. The behemoth had entered from the gate directly opposite. To his side, the weirates, Arab and Bala, had appeared, immediately moving together into a pair. Between Drew and the brothers stood Taboo, limbering up as she prepared for the fight. To the other side of Drew stood the rhino, Krieg, flanked by the lean figure of Drake. The winner crocodile looked the most relaxed of all, turning to look towards a chanting crowd. Last of all, between Drake and the behemoth, Stan could be seen, the buffalo shaking the dust from his shaggy mane. Drew wondered who, if any, would follow his lead. None of the other warlords carried weapons. In a cruel twist divided by ignorance, they were to use two four and their therian strength alone to best defeat the other opponents. Only Drew's tried beggar remained on his stumped wrist. Drew hoped to avoid the behemoth from the coming fight. The giant had been responsive to the idea of breaking out, but that was yesterday. Here, in the heat of the arena, it might count for naught. There had to be a fight, and that fight would separate those who were with Drew and those who were against him. Arik and Balak were certain enemies, while questions remained of the Drake to do. Then the battle began. It happened so fast, triggered by the two brothers. As if reacting to Drew's thoughts, the eight lords wasted no time, rushing to boot as a roping gambit. As they charged, they changed, forearms exploding in muscles while their backs expanded, silver bristles bursting from their skin. Within seconds, the brothers flanked the young woman, their mouths open to reveal huge, deadly canines. Taboo was ready. She kicked up the dust, sending a cloud into the air to provide cover. By the time Harriet brought his huge hand down at her, the girl had gone. She had shot a light leg through the dusty air, her claw foot striking and piercing the ape's shoulder, sending him tumbling away. When Balch's fist threw, flew through the air where he'd imagined she stood, Taboo rolled out of the dust, transformed, her body shivering with dark black stripes across orange skin. The weird tiger snarled, unfazed by the roots. Drew turned just in time to see the bowed head of Creed charging him. The rhino was transformed, head down, shoulders thick with light armor. Dodging the great horn, Drew caught the brunt of the attack from the rhino's shoulder. The collision was colossal, the pain immense. Drew was catapulted into the air and back towards his gate, landing in the dirt. As he flew, he tried to breathe. The air had been crushed from his lungs. Drew rolled, choking and gasping as he saw Creed skid, changing his angle of attack. The head was his primary weapon, and the ground thundered as he sped back towards Drew. Creed, he yelled, his breath returned. What are you doing? We can fight together. It can't work, boy, Creed snorted as he charged. Better let me finish you. End this quickly. Three of us have to die, and I won't be one of them. Drew hadn't wanted to fight Creed. He had believed he'd be a, he had believed he'd be an ally, but he'd got it wrong. Drew let the wolf in, and the transformation was rapid. He leapt up from the floor at powerful leap high legs, his claw feet digging into the dirt for extra purchase. The specially built trident dagger sat snugly on his left arm, while his clawed right hand was open. His yellow eyes blazed in purpose as he peeled back his lips through his deadly teeth. He let out a deafening roar to alert Drew. The crowd screamed deliriously as Drew changed, but he ignored their cheers, his attention focused on the rider. The armor plating over Creed's head, shoulders, and back afforded it the confidence in battle that few Therians would ever know. Drew's trident dagger <coughs> at the main horn, sending his arm ringing with shock. He dropped to one side as the brute raced to the center of the furnace, allowing his clawed hand to rake along the rider's flank. 
Father Claus struggled for any purchase, trading powerlessly over Creed's armored skin. The rhino was far bigger than the wolf, but what Drew lacked in size, he made up for in agility. He readied himself to Creed's next attack, using the same defense as before, raising the dagger again. At the last moment, with Creed almost on top of him, Drew leapt in the air, spinning and coming down to land on the rhino's shoulders. Creed snorted, swinging his head, legs still pumping, momentum carrying him forwards. Drew held on tight, his arms around the rhino's throat as Creed charged on. Creed looked up suddenly as the arena wall appeared before him. He felt Drew's feet dig into the arm of his back as he sprang away to safety, the rhino struggling vainly to slow down. He crashed into the wall with a sickening crunch, rocks and rubble coming loose and showering as he collapsed the furnace floor.